I'm now joined by our NFL insider, Connor Hughes. And Connor, 17 years in the making it was yeah. for the Jets and the Giants to have joint practices. 17 years, almost two decades. I mean, is that older than you? Uh, almost. I mean, I think I was in like second grade. <laughs> All right, stop. I was just second, kidding. Yeah, All right, let's talk about grade. this boring practice because, you know, everybody <laughs> yeah. came here thinking, you know what, the last time they had practice, it was a fight. Yeah. There was brawl. It was, it's hot. It's the Jets and the yeah. Giants. Didn't happen at all today. No, and Janae, I think a big reason for that is is there really hasn't been that much animosity between the Jets and the Giants in, in quite a long time. And I think a big reason for that probably has to do with some of the struggles of, of both these organizations over the last few years. There also really isn't anyone on either side of the organization banging the drum of we hate you you know, you hate us. Where I think about 2011 when Rex Ryan was like, we're the big brother, we're going to run New York forever. Well, Robert Sala's not doing that. You know, Brian Dable's not doing that. In fact, there's a, a strong mutual respect mm -hmm. that started way back when with, with both these guys who are, are self-made in the NFL. They, they became very good friends at the NFL owners meetings this year. And they realized, look, we're 30 minutes apart it makes too much sense for us not to practice together. So, you know, they, they wanted to make this happen. They did make this happen. And before practice actually started, both teams came together, Jets and Giants. Robert Sala, Brian Dable stood in the middle, and they said, look, treat everyone on this field like they're your teammates. No fights, no brawls. Let's both try to get better. Both teams actually broke mm -hmm. together on a New York chant, which was a little like, you know, Mighty Ducks-ish type <laughs> right, thing. Right, right? But <laughs> yeah, it, it was kind of like, you know, kumbaya moment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, no, no fights, no brawls, no really even pushing and shoving. It was just a real productive day for both Giants and Jets. It was, like I said, it was boring, no fights. But like you said, productive day. Why was it so good for the yeah. Giants to see this Jets defense and this Jets offense to see the, yeah. uh, you know, the Giants defense? Yeah, well, they're, they're polar opposite schemes, right? So, so take about, think about this from, from Daniel Jones' perspective. Every single day in training camp, he's gone up against Wink Martindale's defense. Yes. Well, Wink Martindale's defense is as exotic and crazy as any in the NFL. Because everybody and their brother coming at him. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw a series of, of drills out here at practice where literally they did not have a defensive lineman with the hand in the dirt. Everyone was standing around. It's Rex Ryan-esque, which makes sense because Wink studied and underneath Rex Ryan. Okay. Yeah, so it's like that crazy exotic thing. Well, that's what Daniel Jones has seen every single day. Well, Robert Sala doesn't run that. Robert Sala isn't pressure-oriented. He wants to get pressure with his front and then play coverage back deep. So this was a chance for Daniel Jones to go seeing one defense every single day to now he goes back and he sees a completely different defense. For the Jets, obviously, Zach Wilson wasn't out there, but Joe Flacco, who expects to start the opener against the Ravens, he's seen the Jets' defense every single day. Now he sees a different kind of an offense or a different kind of a defense. So it's a chance for, for both quarterbacks to see something new, train against something new, and also test to see how your scheme works against a different kind of front. And... Again, I'm going back to the fact that it was a very boring practice yeah. to watch, but they ended early. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a hot dog days of summer, and they wanted to avoid some injuries. There were some injuries yeah. on both sides of the, yeah. on the field. Yeah, a couple Giants limped off. DJ Reed, uh, Jermaine Johnson, the Jets, two, uh, two, two players, pretty important for the Jets. Those guys left now. From what we understand and what we've been told, obviously we have learned that you don't always want to go off the first prognosis, but it does certainly <laughs> seem like both of these guys avoided serious injuries and everyone's going to be fine. But Robert Sala, Brian Dable, they both got together. They said, look, a couple guys banged up. You're a little banged up here. We're a little banged up there. Why don't we just call this one? We'll run some gases and get out of here with a pretty productive day. And, and that's exactly what this was. No fights yet. We'll see what happens with the media in the background right now. Yeah, but yeah. everything's good right you, now. you know how that is um again it was great working with you at the giants weird. facility weird but good weird, I weird know. but good um again you don't need to tell me how old you were the last time these guys uh <laughs> practiced but for connor hughes i'm janae coakley